Hello guys, today I'm reacting to another fragrance reviewer who is here in the UK as well called Jude de Rose. Josephine, I haven't reacted to her in quite a while, so I wanted to do a, another reaction video to one of her most recent uploads called 10 Summer Colognes or Top 10 Summer Colognes for Men 2024 because I want to see what her taste is like nowadays, see if I can learn about some new fragrances myself. And also she's just a great channel. She has high production value. She has a background in the industry. She's very consistent. She's a great channel. So make sure you go subscribe to Josephine if you haven't already. She does both women's and men's fragrances, which is very useful. So today we're going to react together guys for the first time. Let's begin. gentlemen it has been a while and today we are talking about summer fragrances let's dive straight into perfume number one which is Orpiste from Bastille Parfum I love the fact that she did not blab on like I do she literally just went straight into it I love that when creators do that because it's so much usefulness is in that you just get straight to the point doesn't mean I will change personally. I love to blab on guys. I'm sorry. This is a more affordable niche fragrance option and it is a beautiful zesty spicy citrus with ginger, juniper berries and orange. I've never seen this fragrance before. This is quite interesting. So let me just look at the note breakdown on Fragrancica. So tangerine, orange, juniper berries or, or juniper. I'm not sure which one, but that usually gives off a gin and tonic vibe. Ginger, pink pepper, cedarwood, okay. So it seems like quite a standard citrus, spicy, freshly, maybe something akin to Afternoon Swim by Louis Vuitton. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting right now. It smells like an orange infused gin and tonic. So really zesty orange, not so much on the sweetness. It's all about the zest. Add some shavings of ginger, dash of gin and you have the perfect summer cocktail. Okay, there we are, the gin and tonic reference I made there. What do you guys think of fragrances that give off a cocktail effect? A very famous one, of course, is Virgin Island Water by Creed, which gives off a classical a pina colada effect. Or 212 VIP, the silver bottle had absinthe as a note in there, which is quite interesting. What do you guys think of those kind of notes? Do you like that in your summer fragrances? Do you like that in your fragrances in general? It dries down very cooling and refreshing. There's also the addition of ambroxan, which will prolong the longevity and boost the freshness of the scent. It's amazing. If you're looking for a casual, really refreshing scent for everyday use in the summertime, try out Orpiste from Bastille. And you can get a 50 ml of that for hundred pounds, which is not that bad at all. So it's quite affordable niche, as she said. Would you be interested in a fragrance like that? Now, if you're looking for a beast mode citrus, specifically lemon, look no further than Fanfare from Thamine. This fragrance is so strong and it will last all day long. It is a lemon forward perfume, especially in the opening. You can think of it as a slice of lemon dipped in some brown sugar. So it's a little bit sweet, has a honeyed note. You add a dash of vermouth and that is this fragrance. Interesting. So I've got the mean carved oud, which I think is actually a fantastic clone of oud woods. I haven't tried their other stuff. And let me look at that note breakdown again for this fragrance. Yeah, interesting notes. Lemon, neroli, vermouth. Again, very cocktail heavy. Juniper berry, so it's gonna smell like gin and tonic as well. So this is a very boozy summer scent. It's interesting that a lemon fragrance is very long lasting. It's quite rare. Other beast mode lemon fragrances that you can go for are Oud Lemon Mint, of course, by Mansara. I get 14 hours of that. Zerjov's Torino 21, I get eight to 10 hours with that. And also Sospiro Vibrato, that's a very long lasting citrus fragrance. I can't remember if it has lemon in it, but that's 12 hours longevity, great performing freshy also. I'm not sure if I'm interested in this fragrance, but I would definitely check it out. If I go to a niche department store, I'll go to the Thamine section. This is gonna be one of the fragrances I'll check out. 37.9% of people who watch School of Scent are subscribed to us. If you guys really wanna see our channel grow, go ahead and click subscribe. Let's get that number to 40%, thank you. So if you're into Vibrato from Suspiro, you need to try Blue Talisman from Ex Nihilo. Yeah, I've actually been seeing a lot of hype for this fragrance on Instagram. TJ Talk Sense, who's a great account fellow on Instagram, he always mentions this fragrance. If you wear this fragrance, just know that the compliment factor will be at an all time high. There's something about this DNA that just does something to people. I definitely need to check it out. Let me just learn more about it from Josephine. The two fragrances are spicy citruses with ginger, but Blue Talisman has a little bit more going on. You have the addition of a juicy pear that is especially prominent in the opening, as well as an addition 
distinctive woody base of Akigela wood. And Akigela wood is a synthetic molecule that smells like a clean, fresh patchouli. It's so good. Yeah, pear, bergamot, mandarin, we got Ambro Ambrofix, musk, and Agicola wood. Agicola wood is also known to have some spicy, peppery aspects in there as well. It's one of my favorite notes from uh, Fougere d'Argent, which gives that peppery, spicy Fougere feeling. Blue talisman does seem quite interesting. The bottle looks cool also. I'm sure I'm gonna check this out at some point. I've never really actually tried Ex Nihilo, the brand in general. Have any of you guys tried this fragrance? I know it's quite hyped these days. Is it good, bad, mediocre? Let us know. And it's quite interesting that she says it's Sospiro Vibrato, but with more going on, because actually I do think there's a fair amount going on in Sospiro Vibrato. I never thought that's, that's a simplistic fragrance. I think that's actually a more nuanced version of Thai Gar. Thai Gar is the simple fragrance, so they've just made more layers to be added to this DNA, so that's, that's quite interesting. I do think Sospiro Vibrato gets that complexity level just right. I think that's a great fragrance, by the way. That's a 10 out of 10. And it's an all-round good summer freshie, especially if you enjoy spicy citruses. Now, I know that longevity and projection is important to you, and it's so hard to find with fresh fragrances, but I have found yet another beast mode freshie, Perseus from Parfum de Marly. I've actually tried a sample of this recently. This is a pretty solid fragrance. It's not mind-blowing, it's not hugely creative. I'd give it maybe an eight out of 10, but she's right. It has great performance. I, I got about eight to 10 hours with a medium projection at least. It's a solid performing freshie. That smells citrusy, spicy, musky. It's a standard DNA, but just done really thick. It smells high quality and it lasts a really long time. This is a grapefruit to ginger combo. And to me, this smells like a hybrid between Roja's Elysium and, <clears throat> and Pomelo Riviera from Atelier des Ors. If both of these fragrances had a baby, Perseus would be it. So the grapefruit is really zesty. It's more like grapefruit peel, so it's a bit bitter. And it's anchored by a lot of cashmerans, so those ambery, woody DNA that will bring the longevity of this perfume. On my skin, it lasts 10 hours plus with fantastic projection. And I'd recommend wearing this during the day to a beach club, or you can also transition into the evening. So it's another versatile freshie. I wouldn't recommend it for the evening times personally, but hey, we have different opinions, that's fine. But I do think it does smell luxurious. Uh, I do think it is a solid fragrance. It's worth trying. I'm not gonna say go ahead and blind buy it, but next time you're at a PDM counter, Go ahead and try it, guys, or sample it online. Now, there's only one perfume that I'd recommend you try from this entire list, just one. It is Imagination from Louis Vuitton. I discovered this a few weeks back at the Louis Vuitton counter. I bought it on the spot. I personally prefer Immensité, but most people do seem to prefer Imagination a little bit more. But hey, your choice, try them both out. They're both very popular scents in the brand of Louis Vuitton. We actually did a recent Louis Vuitton buying guide if you guys want to see that as well. After you finish watching this video, of course. This perfume is so addictive. Oh my gosh, and it's so freaking good. It's an aquatic citrus fragrance that features lemon and it dries down into a clean, watery neroli tea scent. Very cooling, very refreshing, and it's to me, like the white shirt of fragrances. It is crisp, understated, but very effective. Yeah, I think that's a very accurate description. It's got a calming effect from that tea note. If you like fragrances like Silver Mountain Water or the discontinued Gucci Pour Homme 2, you'll probably really love Imagination by Louis Vuitton. I get around six hours of this fragrance. It's definitely a solid scent. That is still wearable on an everyday basis. On the more affordable side, we have Nautica Voyage from Nautica. Okay, let's just stop the video right there. Maybe we should just end this reaction video at this point and call it a day, guys. Okay, let's carry on, we'll carry on. I'd recommend this if you like fragrances such as Aqua Di Gio, CK1, Quercus from Penhaligans, Chrome from Azzaro, so those marine, fresh, aquatic type of scents. This smells as if you were on a boat day in the summertime. There's something that is marine, a bit salty, oceanic, yet in here you have the addition of some florals and particularly mimosa, which is gonna add a powdery, slightly 
honeyed touch, which is really lovely and a twist on the more traditional oceanic DNA. Yeah, it's interesting that she mentioned a Zaro Chrome in one of the, her comparisons there. I actually think that's the superior affordable option compared to something like Nautica Voyage, or I always recommend Mont Blanc Legend Spirit. It smells a little bit less synthetic or it's a little bit smooth at least, whilst Nautica Voyage is a bit of a callow and overdose, giving that very synthetic marine effect that the fragrance note gives, but also it has this very peculiar cucumber in there, which I wasn't a huge fan of. I think cucumber is a cool idea in fragrances. I just don't think it's done very well in Nautica Voyage. I appreciate it's a very cheap scent. It's a, an affordable beginner option, fair enough. But I always recommend alternatives over here, guys. But hey, I respect Josephine's opinion here. What do you guys think? Agree or disagree? As the more affordable fragrances go within this category, this is the best one. Next is Terre d'Hermès Eau Givrée. This is an icy, bitter citrus. If you like the scent of lemon zest or grapefruit zest, this is going to be right up your alley. Yeah, I got a bottle of this recently and it was in our video titled fragrances I wish I'd purchased much sooner. This is a fantastic freshie. A lot of people complain about the longevity of this fragrance. I get six to eight hours. I think this is a solid performing, really refreshing grapefruit-esque lime soda, that kind of effect is what I get from this scent with a, a dry, crispy vetiver on the dry down. It's very easy to like. It's not a challenging vetiver at all. This is a really easy to love fragrance. It has class and elegance that Hermes is known for. There's also the addition of Timut pepper, which is a type of spice that's going to bring a peppery side, but also a sparkling grapefruit facet. So essentially this fragrance is a freshly squeezed lemon and grapefruit juice with a fiery, spicy side. That's really interesting. So it wasn't just my crazy imagination thinking of grapefruit when I smell that fragrance. I kept saying that in my review of it. Although grapefruit is not listed as a note, the citron is the main note, I do get grapefruit vibes from this fragrance. This is what Light Blue Forever should have been. I prefer OG Bray by Hermes over Light Blue Forever personally. Next up is Jerome Sport, a glorious citrus woody fragrance. It opens very briefly with a fizzy lemon that is rapidly taken over by a spicy pine-like facet. So it's fresh, it's woody, resinous, a bit spicy, and the magic happens in the dry down. She's definitely a much better reviewer than I am. She actually talks about really intricate details about the fragrance. I'm just like, yo guys, it's an orange woody amber. That's how it smells to me. I summarize it for you guys in a really uh, quick way. That's just my style. Um, but uh, Josephine has a better nose than me probably. Uh, so I think she does really give it and she does the fragrance justice. She really tells it how it is. I think it's a fantastic scent, the Orm Sport 2021. I would say it's, you know, some days I give it a nine, some days I give it a 10. It's a fantastic fresh fragrance that's very safe, handsome, easy to understand, easy to like, long lasting. You can wear it in three out of four seasons as well. It just, maybe winter is its weakest season, but other than that, it's really versatile also. So it's one of the stronger designers out there for the summertime. I prefer it over the original Dior Homme 2020. I feel like Dior Homme Sport 2021 is what Dior Homme 2020 should have been. I've said that many times before on this channel, guys. Get Dior Homme Sport 2021, that's a superior flanker. The dry down is so incredibly sexy. I just, I can't get over the dry down. It's so good. And if I was a guy, this fragrance would be a confidence booster. This would be confidence in a bottle. This fragrance smells like a confident guy wearing a white linen shirt, some shades, simple, no she she type of scent. Yeah, that's actually a really accurate representation of the kind of guy who should wear this. Handsome, confident, not trying to be too fancy. That describes this fragrance perfectly. Another summer staple is Bohemian Lime from Goldfield and Banks. This is an incredible spicy citrus, similar territory to Vibrato from Suspiro, but I would say it's more masculine leaning and it has a more chilled, laid back vibe. Interesting. I would say actually Suspiro so Vibrato is a bit more masculine than Goldfield and Banks Bohemian Lime, but hey, that's just our difference of opinion and obviously everyone's skin is different but bohemian lime is a really nice smooth finger lime note one of the best lime fragrances out there it's not a very common citrusy see in perfumery 
and it dries down to very nice, clean, relaxed musks, like Josephine is saying, some dry, crisp vetiver. Again, that easy type of vetiver that you find in something like OG Vray as well. So easy vetiver fragrance, very easy to understand. Unisex, six hours longevity is what I get. I think this is a very safe citrus fragrance. I can't really see anyone ever hating the scent. I would wear this at a beach party, cocktail in hand, more of a bohemian style. It actually has a sense of tropical escapism. So if you're going somewhere warm, a warm destination, whether that is in the summertime or if you're going to an island somewhere, I would recommend to pack this fragrance into your suitcase. Yeah, very appropriate recommendations there, I agree. And finally, we have Molecule O2 from Eccentric Molecules. Interesting, I was not expecting to see this fragrance here. Everyone always talks about Molecule O1, but I always recommend Molecule O2, especially if you want that longevity booster, which these fragrances are usually used for. These are as a base, you spray these on first, and then you spray a short performing fragrance on top of it. Molecule O1 is pure ice, so we super, which is often already found in large amounts in most fragrances on the market nowadays, whilst Molecule O2 is ambroxan, pure ambroxan, which is not as common as ISOE Super from what I can tell. So you are gonna get more of a longevity booster from Molecule O2. And similar to how Molecule O1, some people like to use it on its own, just wear it, uh, spray around, you get ISOE Super projecting off you, giving you compliments, and it really adapts to your skin. That's kind of the, the magical nature of ISOE Super. You kind of get a similar effect with Ambroxan as well. Ambroxan can be clean, refreshing. It's meant to be an ambergris replication, which is considered one of the best ingredients in perfumery. It's long lasting it'll very likely get you compliments also. So try Molecule O2, you might be sleeping on it. I think a lot of people are. In my opinion, one of the sexiest fragrances ever to smell on a guy. This is made up of Ambroxan, and Ambroxan is a synthetic molecule that is used in a lot of men's fragrances, especially the fresh ones, to boost with longevity, projection. It also brings a mineral marine an amber woody DNA, it's so good. And actually I would recommend mixing it with other fragrances within this list. Actually all of these fragrances would go really well with Molecule O2. Yeah, actually when she held up Imagination, in my mind, I did think that would actually be a fire combination. I think Imagination, which could use a little bit of a longevity boost with Molecule O2 would work really nicely. I might try that actually. I'll try it right now actually, Let's. why not? Let's try it right now guys. So we've got Molecule O2, let's spray one on the back of the hand. And then I have my decant of imagination here. Let's spray it on. Yeah, I'll say straight away that the scent profile isn't getting affected that much by the Ambroxan, which is very useful. It seems more dense and intense seems to project more. I'll put a full comment down below giving my full experience of this combination and I'll let you guys know if it's a success or not. But so far it does seem to work definitely. If you struggle with longevity and or projection. So this can be worn on its own. You can wear it to work because it's not going to be too cloying but people can smell you. It, this, this perfume, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, she makes a really good point. I think Molecule 2 on its own, easily uh, an inoffensive work fragrance, unisex, either gender can rock this. Definitely a useful, handy fragrance to own. I'm telling you guys, consider getting a bottle. If you need that longevity booster, consider this. And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I did, Josephine, thank you very much. I thought that was an excellent video. Some really interesting new picks that I didn't know about that I'll definitely aim to try it at some point anyways and some more well-known fragrances. I think this is a great top 10 list. What do you guys think? What do you think of Josephine's review and presentation style? Again, I think she is fantastic, so make sure you go ahead and subscribe to her, guys. Jude Rose, fantastic channel. We'll leave it in the description down below. What do you guys think of today's 10 fragrances? What do you think of my thoughts on these fragrances? Do you agree or disagree? Let us know down below as well, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my previous reaction video up here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.